Hey, welcome to Board Game Casual, and another quick, if you like this, try that, board game recommendation video. Everybody starts somewhere, and it can be daunting to navigate through the deep sea of board games out there. One of the questions I see a lot is, what board game do you recommend if I like Carcassonne? If you're a fan of the classic tile laying game Carcassonne, and you're looking for something similar but a little more modern to try, then I highly recommend checking out Cascadia. Cascadia takes the concept of laying out tiles with different terrains to score and expands on it, giving you more agency, more ways to score, and more variability on how things are scored from game to game. Not only do you lay a terrain tile to score, but you also lay these animal tokens on top of the terrains to score as well. The first thing I really like about Cascadia is that where in Carcassonne all of the tiles are upside down and you blindly grab one to place, in Cascadia you always have a market of four tiles paired with an animal to choose from. So right away you have more interesting decisions and control over your strategy. So this tile has a terrain of mountains and some plains and it would come with this deer token. The nice thing about this tile is that I would be able to place the deer directly on this token if I didn't have any other tiles that accept deer on my terrain. Unlike Carcassonne, where everyone is building upon a centralized map, in Cascadia, each player is building their own separate map. You'll notice each tile has a type of terrain, or multiple terrains on it, and you get points for connecting tiles with like terrains together to make big forests or mountain ranges, for example. So for example, uh, here I've got two water tiles connected together. These would be uh, two tiles worth of forests. Uh, you know, these mountains aren't touching anything, so these are separate one-point mountain tiles. And here I've got uh, the plains uh, covering three tiles. However, you'll also notice that each tile has a symbol or multiple symbols on it that indicate which type of animal can be placed on this tile. And the way these animals are grouped or positioned on your map also score you points. The way they score is dictated by these scoring cards. You're gonna pull out one card for each animal type in the game you're playing. So for example, let's look at the bear cards here. These bears like to be in pairs. They don't wanna be around other bears, they just want two together. So if you have one pair on your map that aren't touching any other bears, that's worth four points. If you have two pairs on your map not touching, that's worth 11, 19, 27, so on and so forth. Versus something like this salmon on this card here, you score based on salmon in a continuous line, basically the longest run, and you get varying points based on how long your continuing run of salmon are. Compared to this red tail hawk, they want to be by themselves, or specifically, they don't want to be surrounded by any other hawks. So you want to place your hawks so that they're not touching. What's really smart about this game is that there are multiple scoring cards to choose from for each animal. So we talked about the bears. Uh, we happen to draw this card that wants to score the bears in pairs. But in another game, we might be using this card that wants the bears to be in three. And if you have three together, you get 10 points. They can be in any shape as long as they're touching. If we were to look at this card instead, on this card, you're scoring bears either as a single, as a pair, or as three bears together. And you can see the points that you get for the group of bears that you have that are surrounded by anything other than bears. Uh, if we were to pick this card, you get points for a size of two, a size of three, or a size of four. So you don't want bears by themselves, and you wouldn't want bears in a group of five or bigger. Being able to choose different cards for each game gives you a lot more variability because the way the animals score can be so different from game to game. Of course, you don't have to change up the scoring conditions if you want to stick with the cards you prefer, but it gives you that option to keep things from getting stale.
Now, if what you like about Carcassonne is being able to cut someone off or snipe in on a space on the common map that everyone's playing on, then maybe this game isn't for you, since in Cascadia, each player is building their own separate map. But personally, I like the separate maps much better. Win or lose, I have a sense of accomplishment. I can see what I've built right in front of me. I really enjoy Cascadia, and I think it plays well at any player count. And if you're a Carcassonne player or know someone who is, I highly recommend giving Cascadia a try. I hope you found this video useful, and if you primarily play Carcassonne, that it gives you some incentive to branch out. By the way, if you're a Settlers of Catan player and are looking for a similar recommendation of what to play, check out the previous video where I recommend Space Base, which to me is like Catan on speed. On that note, thanks for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.